Okay, welcome everyone to our ZAG seminar. It's uh, my big pleasure to introduce Guole Jong from uh, Institute of Basic Science uh, in KAIST in Korea. And uh, Guole will speak about uh, three folds with action of abelian group of maximal dynamical rank. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Okay, uh, so hello everyone. Uh, today I would like to discuss some complex dynamics with you. Okay, so uh my talk can be divided into five parts so first uh, i would like to uh, uh record the dynamical degree and the positive entropy and zero entropy and after that uh, i would like to introduce some background and previous results uh in this project and after that um, before i state my main result and the proof i would like to uh uh record the the this project this project in the projective setting uh, for the comparison and finally I will ask some open questions. Okay, so we start from a compared color manifold of dimension n with a fixed color form omega, and uh, we denote by this auto x the group of all holomorphic automorphisms of x. And we define the piece dynamical degree of uh, element G in the automorphism group uh, as the spectral radius of the induced linear map on the vector space HPP, PP cohomology. Okay, so note that the induced operation of every anamorphism G on the uh, cohomology class is a linear operation. So we can discuss the, uh, uh, the eigenvalue and the spectral radius. Okay. And also this DPG can be calculated uh, via, this for, uh, via this scalar form omega. And uh, actually this limit does not depend on the choice of this omega. Okay. And uh, after we define the piece dynamical degree, uh, we define the algebraic entropy as the maximum of the logarithm of piece dynamical degree, uh, where this P runs through zero uh, to N. Okay. So uh, this is the algebraic entropy. And actually there is another notion in the dynamical system called the topological entropy, which I uh, will not uh, give the precise definition here, but by, uh, by the famous result proved by Gromov and Yomding, uh, the topological entropy coincides with the algebraic entropy. Okay, so the top topological entropy is a dynamical invariant measuring the divergence of the orbits. So uh, by the Kowalski and the Tizer, uh, there is a, a interesting pro property for the dynamical degrees. So we call the concavity of dynamical degree. So this means uh, there exist two uh, natural numbers, u and v, such that uh, from zero to u, the dynamical degree uh, is an increasing chain. And from uh, u to v, the dynamical degree coincide equal to each other. And finally, from a DVG, uh, from the V's dynamical degree to the N's dynamical degree, this is a strict uh, decreasing chain. Okay, so we say that an element G is of positive entropy if the topological entropy is positive, or equivalently, uh, the first dynamical degree is greater than one. So you can see from the uh, uh, Gromov and the Yodin's result, uh, the topological entropy coincides with the algebraic entropy. So if uh, so, this topological entropy is positive if and only if this HAG is also positive. So since this is the maximum, so there exists some P such that the logarithm of this DPG is positive. So this means there exists some P such that this DPG is greater than one. And by this concavity, uh, of the dynamical degree. This means for all P from one to N, uh, this D, uh, DPG is greater than one, okay? So uh, equivalently, we just say the first dynamical degree is greater than one. And except for the elements, uh, uh, Dean and Siboni also consider the subgroup of positive entropy. So we say that a subgroup is of positive entropy if every non-trivial element in this G is of positive entropy. Okay, so this is for the smooth case. 
So we can also define a dynamical degree in a singular setting. So we start from a projective variety or a compact color space, and we define the first dynamic nickel degree as the spectral radius of the G pullback on the nylon savory space when X is projective. Or we define this D1G as the spectral radius uh, of this G pullback on the Bolo Chen cohomology space when X is a compact color space. Note that this notion just equal to the 1 1 class with real coefficients when X is smooth. Okay. So we, we define a G. Uh, if this G is positive entropy, uh, we say this G is of positive entropy if the first dynamical degree is greater than one. And otherwise we say this G is of zero entropy or of non-entropy. Okay, so uh, note also that this definition coincides with the smooth case. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, the dynamical degree is a bimeromorphic invariance. And this uh, later on, uh, Ding and Siboni also showed that the dynamical degrees can also be defined for dominant meromorphic maps, and they are bimeromorphic invariants. So, uh, but, but here um, in, in our talk, uh, uh, we don't need this uh, result, but uh, it, uh, I think it is very important. So, I just leave uh, this result here for your convenience. Okay, so this is the things I would like to recall for you, the dynamical degree and the entropy. So in the following, I would like to introduce some background and the previous results uh, in this project. Okay, so motivated by Smell's work, uh, Ding and Siboni studied the structure for an abelian subgroup of the automorphism uh, group X. So suppose there is an abelian subgroup G uh, of the auto X, where this X is a compact color manifold of dimension uh, greater than or equal to two. Then uh, there are three points. The first point is if you take the elements of zero entropy of this G, then such U is a subgroup. So this is the property for the zero entropy. The second point is about the positive entropy. So there is a free abelian subgroup H containing this G, which is of positive entropy in the sense that every element, every non-trivial element in this H is of positive entropy. And this G, uh, and this H has a rank uh, no more than a minus one. And such that uh, the group, the abelian group G uh, is isomorphic to the product of U and H. Okay. Uh, so you can see the, uh, we can decompose this G as the product of U and H. And usually we define the dynamical rank uh, for, the, for this G as the rank of this free part, of this free abelian part, positive entropy part. And in particular, uh, if this rank H achieves the maximality uh, uh, equal to a minus one, if this rank H equal to a minus one achieves the upper bound, then uh, the zero entropy part, this U is a finite group. Okay, so note that uh, this rank, uh, this uh, upper bound is optimal, uh, as also mentioned in uh, Dean and Siboni's paper. So the rank estimates in this theorem are optimal. As mentioned in this paper, for every n, there is an n-dimensional complex torus T such that the automorphism group of this T contains a free abelian group of positive entropy and of positive of maximum rank. Okay, so this uh, this bound n minus one is optimal. Okay. And uh, later on. Uh, John proved a theorem of Tits type for compact color manifolds. And meanwhile, Ding Siboni's rank estimates were thus extended. So, <clears throat> so this theorem is essentially proved in John's paper and later on in, uh, in the subsequent uh, joint paper by Campana, Wang, and Zhang, uh, they reformulate this theorem again. Okay. So uh, if G is a subgroup uh, of the automorphism, uh, automorphism group X, where this X is a compact color manifold of dimension uh, greater than or equal to two. 
then either this G contains a free non-abelian group, uh, Z star Z, okay? Or there is a finite index solvable subgroup H such that uh, for this H, if you take all the, uh, the element, all the elements of zero entropy elements N, then this zero entropy part is normal in this group H. And the quotient is free abelian of rank no more than a minus one. And in particular, the automorphism group of a compact color manifold satisfies the Tietz alternative. So <laughs> let's recall the general Tietz theorem uh, in the algebraic group uh, theory. So it, it claims that uh, every linear algebraic group G over the uh, over R satisfies the Tietz alternative. So this means any subgroup of G either has a free non-abelian subgroup or is virtually solvable. So virtually solvable means uh, it possesses a finite index solvable subgroup. So you can see uh, in this case, for every, uh, for every subgroup of the automorphism group G, either this G contains a free abelian uh, sub subgroup Z star Z or there is a finite index solvable subgroup H. So in particular, uh, this automorphism group satisfies the Tietz alternative. And uh, uh, the Tietz alternative for the automorphism groups were, was first conjectured in the joint work by uh, Kem, Oguiso, and Zhang in 2009. And later on, uh, Hu uh, extends the Zhang's Tietz alternative to positive characteristics. Okay. So now, uh, in the following, I will introduce the main question in this project. So, so since we know by Dean and Siboni's work and John's work, uh, uh, the, uh, the positive entropy part, uh, the rank is no more than a minus one. So we would like to know uh, for every rank R, can we classify such X? So can we classify this n-dimensional compact color manifold admitting a free abelian group G of automorphisms of rank R, where this R is no more than a minus one, which is of positive entropy? Okay, there are some known cases. So first, for the surface case, uh, this, this is understood by uh, content in 1999. So if X is a smooth complex compact surface, killer or not, uh, admitting an automorphism of positive entropy, then X is either a complex torus, an Eric surface, a K3 surface, or a non-minimum rational surface. Okay. So this is the surface case. And in higher dimensional case, uh, when X is projective and this R achieves the maximum, a minus one, so this has been intensively studied by Zhang in his series of papers. So I give the name called the positive uh, projective case uh, with maximal dynamical rank. So uh, John says that uh, if this X uh, admits an action of group G, uh, which is free abelian of positive entropy and of maximal rank, a minus one, then there are two situations. Either X is rationally connected or this X is birational to a uh, quotient of a complex torus. And all of the uh, birational, morphism, birational map and the quotient map are all G equivalent. So I will uh, uh, give the definition for G equi equivalency later on. So, um, so note that in the boundary case, in the extremal case, uh, when X is projective, uh, 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 John showed that either X is rational, uh, either X is rationally connected or this X is birational to a complex of a, uh, to a quotient of a complex torus. And uh, an important remark here that um, actually these two situations may not be mutually exclusive. I mean, uh, there exists such an example that this X is rationally connected and also it is the quotient of a complex torus uh, as established by Oguiso. Okay, I, I will uh, give the, this example later on. So uh, what I just uh, would like to say is these two situations may not be mutually exclusive. 
Okay. So uh, two more remarks. So actually, uh, Zhang uh, also treated the case when G is virtually solvable. Okay. So this is uh, more general than the abelian group case. And uh, there is a more complete version of this theorem in John's paper where some conditions can be further weakened. So note that uh, this condition actually is very strong. And uh, in, in John's proof, uh, actually he only requires the induced map on the nylon savory group uh, is free abelian. So that condition is a bit weaker than this condition. Okay, but, but anyway, in this talk, I will just use the strong, strong, strong condition. Okay. Okay. So now uh, I will give this example. So which is constructed by Obuiso in two thousand and fourteen, and later on, uh, John verified that this example satisfies our maximum condition. Okay. So there exists a rational threefold X uh, with only KLT singularities, such that this X is also a quasi-tau quotient of a three-dimensional abelian variety. And the second, this X admits an abelian subgroup G, uh, which is of positive entropy and of maximal dynamical rank. Okay. So for the G equivalency, the definition is, uh, so uh, because we have already mentioned the G equivalent many times, so uh, let's define what, what is the G equivalency? So, so a rational map or a meromorphic map from X to Y. So here I write the bracket, bracket here, uh, just the, uh, the meaning is this G acts on, there is an action, uh, the group of action on this X, okay? So uh, this map uh, between projective varieties or compact color space, we say this map is G equivalent uh, if this G descends to a biregular action on Y. So somehow this is a G, a G equivalent descending. And there is another thing about the G equivalent lifting, especially for the resolution. Okay. So the existence of the G equivalent resolution has also been confirmed. Uh, it was first confirmed by Hironaka uh, in 1964. And later on, uh, the proof uh, has been simplified by Bill Storm and Melman and the Villa Mao in their series of works. And wh what I just wrote here is borrowed from the Wodowczyk paper, okay? So this paper, uh, this theorem says uh, there exists a resolution X theta to X, which is functorial in the sense that uh, if you have any uh, automorphism on X, then you can lift this automorphism to, uh, to upstairs to make the diagram commutes, okay? So this is in uh, uh, zero characteristics. And I guess there is a paper about the positive characteristics, uh, but here we, we don't need this, okay? Okay, so now let's review the projective setting, which is the John's program, okay? So um, the following lemma, this lemma is very useful and uh, to deal with the fabrication case. Okay, so uh, this is first observed by Zhang and later on uh, Hu gives a more pre explicit uh, inequality here. So let's see. So if XG is a pair uh, where this G uh, is a free abelian group of positive entropy acts on the, this X. And note that here, this G is only assumed to be free abelian. We don't require this G of maximal rank or something like this. We don't need. Then uh, if there is a G equivalent subjective morphism from X to Y, such that this is the vibration with the dimension X greater than dimension Y, which is positive. Then we have the dynamical rank of this G on X is no more than the dynamical rank of G on Y plus dimension X minus dimension Y minus one. Uh, note that here the descended automorphism group G on Y is still an abelian group. And uh, by Ding and Siboni's theorem, it, it is isomorphic to the product of the zero entropy part uh, times the free abelian part, which is positive entropy. So the, the rank for the positive entropy is the dynamical rank, okay? 
So you can see in particular, uh, if we consider the extremal case when the uh, when the dynamical rank of this G on X is equal to dimension X minus one. Okay, if this, if we consider the maximum rank case, then you can clearly see that in this case, the uh, dynamical rank of G on Y is greater than or equal to the dimension Y, which violates Dean and Siboney's result. So this means uh, this cannot happen unless Y is a single point. Okay, so if there is a G equivalent uh, fabrication uh, and the upstairs, the G on X is of maximum rank, then the downstairs can only be a single point. So with this uh, kept in mind, let's review John's program. So if X is uniruled, then we know there is an MS, uh, maximum rationally quotient, uh, connective quotient fabrication, okay? So, uh, and uh, by Nakayama's special MRC fibration, uh, this G on X can descend to by regular action of G on Y. Okay. So applying the above the result to the G equivalent resolution of this X, and we can show that this Y is a single point because uh, the Jones program is to deal with the uh, maximum rank case. So in this case, as I just explained, the downstairs Y should be a single point. So in this case, Y is a single point. Uh, this implies this X is rationally connected. Okay. And the second part is our main focus. So if X is not uniruled, then by the joint work of Boxen, the Maui, Pong, and Peter Nail in 2013, the canonical divider is pseudo-effective. And then we need to run the G equivalent minimal model program with scaling. Okay, before I show the, uh, before we review the G equivalency, uh, I will give a remark here. So um, for the first part, when X is uniruled, uh, this, uh, this argument somehow still work in our killer case. case. So if we apply the Barlet's analytic cycle theory, we can also deduce the rational connectedness of uniruled killer threefolds if this threefold admits a free abelian group of maximal rank. Okay, so this means for the first part, it is still true if X is not projective, but we only assume X is a compact killer threefold. Okay, and uh, for the second part, if X is not uniruled by the theorem of uh, Brunella in 2006, this, the canonical divisor is also pseudo-effective in the analytic case in dimension three. Okay, so this is different from the BDPP. So in the following, uh, uh, both the projective setting and our analytic setting, we always focus on the second case. So we only focus on the case when KX is pseudo-effective. Okay. So the question is how to make sure the G equivalency so to consider the G equivalency, uh, both on the projective setting and the analytic setting, we need to introduce a very important NAF and B class so as to make sure the G equivalency. Okay, so let's see. So uh, we start from a normal projective variety X or a compact color manifold of dimension N and assume there is a free abelian group uh, G, which is of positive entropy with the rank R and this R is no more than a minus one, okay? Then there are uh, NEF R Cartier divisors or uh, NEF 11 classes L1 to LR plus one. So you can see if the rank is R, then we can find R plus one NEF uh, common angle vectors, okay? So every element LI is a common NEF eigenvector of G. So this means there are R plus one characters chi i such that for each L i, uh, uh, the G pullback on this L i uh, is equal to chi i G times L i, okay. And also the intersection, the intersection L one to L R plus one is non-zero as an element in the R plus one, R plus one cohomology, okay. So of course, what we would like to know is the extremal case. 
So when this R achieves the maximum n minus one, there you can see, okay, we can find the n left eigenvectors because we can find the R plus one, right? So if R is equal to n minus one, then we can find the n eigenvectors. So L1 to L, Ln, then if you put the sum, you, if you take the sum to be this A, then you can clearly see this A is a big divisor because uh, the self-intersection A power N, there is a sum N, L1 to Ln, which is positive because every Li is nef. Okay, so this is for the projective case. And in the analytic case, I think this is proved, the bigness of such property uh, is proved by the Maui and the Pong in their numerical characterization of nef and big divisors. Okay, so also this special A is very, uh, has very nice property. Okay, as observed by Zhang, uh, for every G periodic KK class alpha, this A power N minus K times alpha is equal to zero. And in particular, uh, if, you, if, if we consider a, a G periodic subvariety Z, then we can also show this A uh, power dimension Z times Z is equal to zero. Or for the first chain class, the second chain class, uh, which are all G invariant, then they all have inter zero intersection with this A, uh, some, multiple, uh, some power, okay. Okay, so this argument not only works in the uh, projective ca uh, category, but also works in our Keller uh, space. So with using this uh, A, uh, let me quickly review John's program for the pure case. And due to the time limit, I will only give a very rough idea. So um, because uh, we, uh, we have such A, then we can show there are only finitely many Kx plus A negative extremal rays. And because uh, you, can, you can freely decompose this A as the sum of an ample divisor and a small boundary, and by adjusting the, the boundary, then you can use the standard form of the cone theorem to deduce there are only finitely many Kx plus A negative extremal rays. Okay, and by some calculation, you can uh, after replacing this A by a sufficiently large multiple, uh, you can also show uh, every Kx plus A negative extremal ray is, uh, is A trivial, okay? So you can deduce the G equivalency by using the projection formula or something like this. And then by uh, since we, we, can, we can get every Kx plus A negative extremal ray is A trivial. So if we have that contraction, then A is the pullback of a nef Cartier divisor from downstairs by the cone theorem, okay? Because A has a zero intersection with the contraction ray, okay? And then by the BCHM uh, in 2010, uh, Belka, Cassini, Haken, and McConnell, uh, uh, John can run the G equivalent minimal model program with scaling, and, uh, and this GMMP will terminate in finitely many steps. So finally, we can get an, the end product Y with a -Y, a KY plus AY being nef, okay? Because what we run is the KX plus A ne uh, negative minimal model program. So our end product, we will end up with the, uh, this KY plus AY being nef, okay? And further, you, we are freely to replace uh, this A by a sub, uh, multiple, so since this is nef, replace this ay by two ay, then this is nef and big because uh, you know the nef nefness and the bigness is preserved by every step. Okay, so finally this ay is still nef and big. So we may assume this ky plus ay is nef and big. Then applying the base point free theorem, uh, uh, there is a birational morphism to downstairs such that this kz plus az is ample. And then uh, John used the sigma decomposition for this can, a pseudo effective divisor KZ to deduce it is a uh, torsion and uh, AZ is thus ample. And finally, uh, uh, we can show the second chain class is also equal to zero. 
And by the Milka's uh, pseudo effectivity for the second chunk class, we finally show uh, this Z is the quotient of an abelian variety. Okay, so this is by Yao steep result uh, in the smooth case. And uh, later on, uh, Grab, Capex, and Peter Nail, they generalize the Yao theorem to the singular case when X is, uh, when the variety is smooth in co dimension two. And finally, uh, this, uh, this result has been generalized to KLT setting by Lu and Taji in 2018. Okay, so this is all of the uh, stories for the projective setting I would like to review. Okay, so now let me enter into the main result and uh, uh, I will give some proofs. Okay. So let's consider the hypothesis. Uh, so this XD, we assume this is a Q factorial compact Keller's KLT threefold pair. And we suppose there is an action of a free abelian group G uh, of positive entropy and of maximal rank. Because you can see uh, this, uh, this rank is no more than dimension X minus one. So since our dimension is three now, so this is two, okay. And suppose further that every reducible component of the support of D is G periodic. Okay, so this is uh, just for the purpose to run the K plus D plus the, some special NF and B class equivalently, okay. Okay. So the following is my main theorem. So if th this is a pair satisfying the, our assumption, then there are also two situations. Either this X is rationally connected or uh, with G replaced by a finite index subgroup, we have the following three points. So first, uh, we can run the G equivalent minimal model program uh, and end, uh, end up this program with some Z, such that this Z is a quasi tau quotient of a complex three torus. And to be more precise, uh, this Z is isomorphic to the quotient of a uh, complex torus T, such that this H uh, acts freely outside a finite set of a complex three torus T. And moreover, the quotient morphism uh, is also G equivalent. Okay, so finally, uh, there is no positive dimension uh, G periodic proper subvariety of Z. Okay, for this end product. And in particular, the bimeromorphic map X to Z in the first, uh, in the first uh, point, uh, this is holomorphic. Okay, this is due to the speciality of uh, the threefold case. Okay, so uh, also there are two situations, either X is rationally connected or uh, uh, we have the G equivalent uh, um, MMP to the downstair to, to a quotient of a complex three torus. Okay. So you, as you know, rationally connected compact color manifolds are projective. So we immediately have the following corollary. So if we start from a non-algebraic compact color threefold with the group action of maximum rank of positive entropy, then X has only one choice. Okay, X can only be bimeromorphic to the quotient of a complex three torus. Okay, so this is an immediate uh, co corollary. And for the proof, uh, as we just uh, as I just mentioned. Uh, there is a special NF and B class A for the uh, in the projective setting. Uh, in our case, we can also find the special NF and B class C. Okay, so we're applying the Dean and Sibonis uh, method to the pullback of the NF cone along a G equivalent resolution. We can get three G common NF eigenvectors because our rank is two, so we can get three. Okay, and with the sum uh, KC1 plus KC2 plus KC3, a NF and B class. But note that here, this KC is only a class. Uh, it may not be uh, integral or rational or the divisor. Okay, not a divisor, it's just a class. So the key question is, are there only finitely many KX plus KC negative or non-positive extremal rays in the, in the cone? Uh, this cone is the closure uh, uh, generated by the um, positive closed currents of bi-dimension one one. Okay. And also are there 
are they generated by are they are this generate uh, this extreme arrays generated by rational curves? Okay, so this is somehow related to the cone theorem in the uh, in the minimal model theory. So before that, uh, please re allow me to review the recent progress uh, in the uh, MMP theory in the Kähler setting. Okay, to the uh, to the knowledge of myself. Uh, uh, I only know the 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 MMP for killer varieties, no more than dimension three. Okay. So uh, in this published version, so this is the published version by Fujino. Uh, Fujino established the minimal model program for Q factorial log surfaces in Fujiki's class. Okay. So this means it by by meromorphic to a, a killer surface. And later on, uh, uh, Philip and Tosati, uh, they proved the base point free theorem in dimension two. Uh, note that this is somehow uh, quite different uh, from uh, our projective setting. Because in the projective uh, case, uh, uh, we usually use the base point, we first establish the base point free theorem. Then we use this theorem to prove the contraction theorem, the cone theorem, so as to establish the MMP. However, uh, in the killer setting, uh, this seems to be very difficult. And uh, according to uh, so many uh, previous nice papers, uh, uh, it seems that we need to first establish the minimal model program, establish the contraction theorem, and then we deduce the base point free theorem as a consequence of the minimal model theory, of the minimal model program, of the existence of the minimal model program. So, so this is for dim, uh, in dimension two. Okay, so when X is a threefold, so the two uh, two papers by uh, Huring Peter Nell in 2015 and in 2016. So these two papers together established the minimal model program for Q factorial terminal killer threefolds. Okay, so this paper deals with the uh, more fibers, uh, the unirule case. This dealt with the canonical divisor being pseudo effective case. And uh, of course, as in the projective setting, uh, we, will, we would like to know that the property of the end product. In other words, uh, whether the canonical divisor of the end product, which being NAF, can define a fibration. So uh, by the Campana, Huring, and Peter Nail, in these two papers, uh, they proved the abundance uh, for compact Keller terminal threefolds, except that X is a simple threefold of Kodera dimension zero. So this is the pure case. And for the log case, uh, Das and O, they established the log abundance for compact Keller log canonical threefold pair with this condition, Kx plus delta is being nav, and the numerical dimension uh, is not equal to two. Then they also established the log abundance, which claims if the kx plus delta is nef, then it is semi ample. In other words, some multiple uh, of this kx plus delta uh, is base point free. Okay. And uh, for this, uh, uh, based on the, uh, the paper by Campana, Huron, Peter Nell, and the DAS O, uh, DAS and Haken, uh, they recently confirmed the existence of the minimal model program for DLT pairs on. Kähler threefolds. And uh, uh, I need to uh, mention here that this paper has already appeared in archive in 2020, two years ago. But it seems that they give some uh, uh, update uh, recently. So I just used the 2022. But actually, this paper appears in 2020. Okay. So these three papers confirmed the existence of the minimal model program for DLT pairs on killer threefolds. And uh, finally, uh, based on the existence of the MMP, uh, Das and Haken proved the base point free theorem on killer threefolds in the four log version for DLT pairs. Okay, and this theorem uh, further generalized the previous paper by Huring and Tosati Zhang, uh, which deals with the um, special case uh, on, of the base point free theorem in dimension three. Okay, so this is all of the history uh, uh, I know. Uh, uh, so I present here for your convenience.
So now let's go back to our, our proof. So the first is uh, we need to consider the finiteness of this Kx plus Kc negative extreme array. Okay. Uh, so, so I proved the following proposition. And note that this proposition has nothing to do with the dynamics. Okay. So you can see here this alpha is an arbitrary NAF and B class. And what we need is in our project, this KC has very nice property. This KC is the sum of the common NAF eigenvectors. Okay. So, so, uh, so here we just uh, prove the uh, the more general form for any NAF and B class alpha. And we show if this Kx plus delta is pseudo effective, then there are only finitely many Kx plus delta plus alpha negative extreme arrays, all of which are generated by rational codes. And when for the case when Kx plus delta is not pseudo effective uh, due to the special form of the cone theorem, uh, we, we need to impose some some further condition, okay. Uh, but for me, uh, since we only consider the non-unirule case, so the first criteria, uh, the first condition is enough in my uh, project. But uh, I think this proposition has has its own interest, so I try to prove some um, some other situations. Okay. So our proof relies on the cone theorem. And under, under these two, as a one of the two conditions, uh, there is a fixed uh, number D uh, such that every Kx plus delta negative uh, extreme array R is generated by a curve L such that this um, minus Kx plus delta times L is bounded from above. Okay. And the cone theorem uh, for the non unirule circle cases uh, has already been developed. But there are some difference with the projected case when x is really ruled. So in the second case, we need some further condition. But uh, but here we don't need this uh, in our proof. Okay. So under the uh, under this prop with the help of this proposition, uh, we show the finiteness of this kx plus kc negative. Uh, there are only finitely many kx plus kc negative extreme array. So um, we can show if we run the Kx plus Kc negative minimum model program, then every step is G equivalent, okay. So finally, we can arrive at some step such that this Kx plus Kc is NAF, okay. So I'm sorry that actually I should say this is Kxn plus Kcxn because uh, you start from X and then you end up with some product Xn, uh, end product Xn. Okay, but for the convenience of notation, I just use Kx plus Kc here. Okay, so if Kx plus Kc is NAF, then uh, there is a G equivalent bimeromorphic map tor from X to Y, such that this Y is a quotient of a torus. Okay. So I will give a brief review for this proposition since uh, uh, it is not uh, uh, that, uh, uh, the, that's the same as in the projective setting, okay. So of course we can, re after replace this Kc by two Kc, uh, we, can, we may assume this Kx plus Kc is NAF and big. And every Kx plus Kc trivial array is also Kc trivial, okay. So this is important because then we can descend this Kc to another NAF and big class to the downstairs. Uh, by the base point free theorem, which is developed by uh, Das and Haken in uh, recently, and there is a holomorphic map tor from X to Y with connective fiber such that this Kx plus Kc is a pullback of some killer class from downstairs. And note that since we, we assume this is naf and big, so um, this map is bimeromorphic. Okay, then we can show this tor is G equivalent. But note that the proof is a bit more troublesome when compared with the projective case. Because in the projective case, um, actually we can show there are only finitely many Kx plus A non-positive extreme array. Because if, uh, if, this, uh, if this is already NAF, and what you would like to know is whether there are only finitely many uh, Kx plus Kc trivial extreme array. 
um, in the projective setting, you can freely decompose this CASI as the sum of ample divisor and some small boundary. And after you adjust, uh, you adjust a bit, then you can, uh, uh, you can make it, it as the form to the kx plus delta uh, plus some ample divisor negative extreme order. Then you are done by the previous, uh, by the standard cone theory. However, in the killer setting, uh, it is impossible to decompose this casey as the sum of ample divisor uh, and plus some small boundary. What we can do is to decompose this casey as the sum of a modified killer class plus a small boundary. So the modified killer means the this is the push down of a killer class from downstairs uh, from upstairs. Okay, so so we need to have more arguments here, but the proof is very technical, so I will skip the proof here. So I just want to mention this uh, this equivalency is not easy to uh, to deduce. Okay, then uh, this tor is quasi trivial. This tor is quasi trivial uh, by our assumption. Okay, so this quasi descends to some F and B class quasi Y, and the KX is the pullback of some KY, and the beta is the uh, the sum of KY plus KY uh, KY plus quasi Y, which is Kla. Okay, so in the following, uh, we would like to prove uh, this KY is indeed a trivial. So if we can show this KY is numerical trivial, then this KCY is, uh, is a killer class because beta is a killer class. Then um, uh, by, by the, uh, our previous result, this KCY times the second chain class is equal to zero because the second chain class is G periodic. So finally, we can use the characterization by graph and uh, Kirchner uh, to show uh, this y is indeed the quotient of a uh, complex torus because the first chain class vanishing, the second chain class has zero intersection with a killer class. Okay. So we, didn't, uh, we use the notation non-locals CASI y, which is a union of positive dimensional proper analytic subvariety v, such that the restriction is not big. Okay, we define this uh, as the non-locals. And uh, there is a lemma that the non-locals coincides with the union of G periodic proper subvarieties. And actually we can show there are only finitely many components. Okay, so since we need to use some arguments on the resolution of currents, so we pull back to the smooth model. So we let pi one be the G equivalent resolution uh, and uh, such that this pullback of this CASI Y is still an F and B class, okay? Then um, by the uh, famous result of uh, Collins and Tosetti, the non-killer locals coincides with the non-locals. And then we choose uh, by the Maui and the Boxen's result, we can choose a killer current T in this uh, pi one pullback CY Y with analytic singularities precisely along the non-killer locals. Then we blow up the ideal shift and taking Hironaka's resolution, we can get a new model, Y2, such that the pullback from Kasi Y to this Y2 can be decomposed into the sum of a killer class and an effective R divisor. And such that the image of this divisor to this, uh, on this model Y1 uh, coincides with the non-killer locals. And note that this blow up is not simply blow up the support, but also it should blow up the ideal shift. So this pi two may not be G equivalent, but uh, according to our construction, the support of this co uh, coherent ideal shift uh, is equal to the non-killer locals. So this is G periodic, okay. And uh, later on, by some by some uh, Hodge index theorem or Hodge Riemann theorem, uh, we can deduce the pullback of ky times omega square is equal to zero, and hence this ky is numerically trivial by noting the fact that this ky is pseudo effective. So finally, this ky is a killer class. And so, so now we have this ky is equal to zero and the c2 times ky is equal to zero. Uh, where this c2y is the orbifold second chain class as defined in Graf and Kirchner's paper, 
And by the same paper, uh, of, uh, we use the colorization to deduce this y is the quotient of a complex torus. Okay, so the pro proposition is proved. Okay, so now uh, I will give more remarks on the on this proof. So note that, so finally we prove that our end product, this y is the quotient of complex torus. So our math theorem is proved, except for the, uh, the composite map is holomorphic, but that is not very difficult to show. So I will skip here. So the G equivalency of the quotient morphism from T to Y shares almost the same proof as in the projective setting. So uh, we just skip it. And also uh, just two more com comments. Uh, the graph and the Kirchner's characterization of pure complex three torus has been recently extended to arbitrary dimension, assuming the smoothness in co-dimension two. Although, so this is in the work, joint work by Clauden, Graf, and Gunasia. And in the same paper, they also showed the semi-positivity of C2 for a general compact color space uh, with the first chain class vanishing. And the singularity should be KLT and smooth in co-dimension two. So finally, let me summarize the proofs. So we start from the initial X to run the KX plus KC minimal model program G equivalently. Then we end up with some XN such that this KXN plus KCXN is an F. And then we show this XN admits a G equivalent bimeromorphic holomorphic map to a quotient of a complex torus T. Uh, actually, this step is just the base point free theorem. Okay. And we need to uh, uh, show it is G equivalent. Okay, so let me end my talk with some open questions. So in the view of Dean Siboni and John's works, uh, we would like to know the general case when G is assumed to be a free abelian group with lower rank. So if this X admits a action of a free abelian group G of positive entropy and of rank R, which may not be equal to N minus one, just uh, no more than N minus one. Then for each rank R, can we classify such X? Note that if R is smaller than N minus one, then we have no uh, Neff and big divisor anymore, okay? <clears throat> so uh, in the joint paper by Hu and Li, they partially answered the above question when this rank G is equal to N minus two. So we call the uh, sub-maximal rank. But even in this paper, they haven't completely answered this question, okay? So this is still widely open when R is, uh, has lower rank. And uh, the second question is, in the view of Oguizo's example on the rational KLT threefold being a quotient of an abelian variety, we would like to know whether there is a uh, variety X such that it is rationally connected, but it is not bimeromorphic to a quotient of complex torus. In other words, uh, uh, we would like to know whether uh, the situation in, in John's theorem Mm, uh, the rationally connected case can exist uh, without being a quotient of a complex torus. Okay, so, <clears throat> so this is another uh, question we would like to know. So far, uh, we only have such rational KLT threefold uh, being a quotient of an abelian variety, but we don't know whether there exists some other interesting rationally connected variety. Uh, admitting the maximal rank positive entropy group, okay? And, but it is not bimeromorphic to a quotient of a torus. Okay, so I think I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker. It's an excellent talk. Uh, thank you, Gurley. Excellent talk. Thank you very much. Uh, let me... Uh, ask question uh, let me just myself ask question and then so it, can you go back to the previous page this page uh, for example question two uh do you know example if you if you just in this question if you forget about the group do you okay. know example of rationally connected threefold uh, or variety which is not bimeromorphic to a quotient of a complex torus <laughs> Uh, you mean uh, there is rationally uh, uh, 
we we have the rationally connected variety, uh, which is not the quotient of a complex torus. Yeah, is there such example? Yeah, I think the if simply we consider the the uh, we just consider the the projective space. Oh, sorry. Here, this quotient of a complex torus means the uh, we need the we need uh, this is a quasi tau quotient. I mean, uh, it should smooth in the uh, it should be how on the on an open locus. So yeah, uh, yeah. So so in this case, uh, uh, the pro for example, the projective space it should uh, should not admit such a. Uh, covered by the torus. No, no, but it says bimeromorphic. You can take a abelian variety and you take a quotient uh, by some group oh. such that it's a ra rational one. I, I'm, 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 I'm sure that maybe there exist examples, but uh, I don't know them. <laughs> yeah, there ex uh, I, as I just uh, actually, Obiso constructed uh, such an example, which is, uh, which means the this X is the quotient of an abelian variety, and uh, and it is uh, it is also rationally connected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my question is other way around. Do we have rationally connected? Do we know rationally connected variety which is not bimeromorphic to equation of a oh. complex torus? So basically, it's your question. But if you remove group, remove the group. I yeah. So basically, does there exist an X <laughs> such that it's racially connected and not by meromorphic to equation of a complex torus? So the same question, but without a group. <clears throat> I see. Uh... On, on top of my head, I don't know such uh, example. Yeah, but OK, anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, just interesting question. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, okay, let me look at the chat. Okay, there's no question in the chat. Okay, uh, if no more questions, let's thank Sugualei for excellent talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. And let me stop recording. One